Rising Storm 2 Vietnam is a game that kind of went under my radar somewhat when it launched, which is surprising when you consider what kind of game it actually is. It's a hardcore, brutal multiplayer game focusing heavily on large-scale 64-player combat in the Vietnam War era. So when the team at Tripwire Interactive reached out and offered to sponsor this video, I was excited to jump in and try out what the team had created. A lot has changed since the game launched last year, and very soon some brand new content is going to be added as well, which makes it a great time to give this game a go if you haven't already. And as a matter of fact, the game is free to play right now on Steam, and the game will be on sale at the same time with all of the DLC for 67% off. So really not a bad time to give this game a shot. There'll be a link in the description to the Steam store if you want to get more info and purchase your own copy. So what makes Rising Storm 2 Vietnam so special then? Well, having put about two or three hours into the game now, it is abundantly clear that this is hardcore combat. It's not a fast-paced, run-and-gun, arena-style shooter, not at all. It's a game that puts you, that soft, fleshy human, in the middle of an extremely loud, exploding full battlefield, and it lets you try and defend yourself. You also have to defend your teammates, and you have to play around objectives as well. So, it's definitely not for the faint-hearted. Two of the large game modes included, Supremacy and Territories, include the 64-player madness that I've been enjoying, and really do drop you right into the thick of the action. I've been spending my time in Territories. Here, the attackers must capture objectives, push through different locations, whilst the defenders have to try and stop them at all costs. Sometimes there is only one objective to capture, and other times there's two, and if there is two, both of them have to be held at the same time before the next set unlocks for the attackers. It's one of those modes where you have one team just relentlessly pushing, and the other team holding down just as best as they can. What I like, though, is that just one wrong move can throw off your entire push forward, and it gets you killed, and that adds to the chaos that's going on around you. There's plenty of attacking routes that you can take. The play areas on the maps do actually stretch quite wide, which I found quite interesting, but if you're struck by a bullet in the wrong place, i.e. your head or, or your neck, then you're going to hit the ground like a sack of potatoes. You're going down very, very quickly. There is a variety of different roles that you can take on, or classes, within different factions, most of which are limited to keep a good balance across the two teams, and these give you access to different weapons and different gadgets that you can use. And it's a mode that, in general territories, that I really appreciate, because whilst it's not as direct as perhaps I thought it would be initially, it allows these little pockets of gameplay to emerge in different places. And since the maps sprawl out quite a bit, it opens up lots of new locations as the attackers move through, you've always got different gameplay opportunities to keep you on your toes. Now, having spent most of my time as a grunt for the American forces, or a guerrilla for the Viet Cong, I quickly realised that full auto-fire is really not the meta in Rising Storm 2 Vietnam. If you're looking to try and suppress people, then yes it is. And if that's your thing, then there's a dedicated machine gunner class that you can pick if that's what you want to do, but the majority of the time, my weapons were in semi-auto mode. It was much easier to keep track of my targets and know if I'd succeeded in taking them down or not. There is a kill indicator that comes up in the top right-hand corner, but it's so small that sometimes you'd miss it. So having it on semi-auto would allow me to see if the body actually dropped to the ground and I'd be able to confirm the kill. I also like that there's some asymmetry going on between the factions. They're all balanced effectively, but it's not like for like. They sort of have different characteristics. The North Vietnamese forces, or at least the squad leader within that faction, they can dig a tunnel that acts as a spawn point, and that allows players to filter back onto the map from a different location. So maybe you could put it round the back of an objective and then keep spawning in from a different location. The South Vietnamese and the American factions, they don't have this function, and they have to spawn from defined points like objectives or directly on their squad leader. It's a nice little touch that adds something different to the gameplay that you really do have to think about. 
Now, I mentioned at the start of the video that there was some new content coming to this game. First of all, let's start off with weapons and gadgets. The NLF faction, the Viet Cong, they're going to be getting access to the Mass 49 rifle with its grenade launcher attachment. This is a rifle that was used a lot during the first Indochina War, where it replaced older bolt action rifles, and it features a 10 round box magazine, and as I mentioned, it comes with the built in ability to fire rifle grenades, which I believe is a first for Rising Storm 2 Vietnam. The Molotov Cocktail, that's also coming to the game soon, that's going to be an option for multiple factions. And lastly, the RP-46 machine gun, that's going to be making an appearance as well, presumably for Vietnamese forces. Alongside those additions are three brand new multiplayer maps, they're coming to the game in a future update as well. This first one, called Apache Snow, is a reimagining of the classic Red Orchestra 2 map called Winterwald. DMZ, Demilitarized Zone, is the second new map, and this is another reimagining, this time of the Mamayev map from Red Orchestra 2. This will be set on the official boundary of North and South Vietnam that was created at the end of the First Indochina War. And lastly, a community map called Saigon. That's going to be joining the official map lineup. This map's going to be set around the US Embassy building at the tail end of the Vietnam War. The dev team have enhanced this community map with more routes for you to take, more verticality and better performance. There's also set to be an overhaul of the leaning system coming to the game soon as well. That's going to allow players to do more with the system as opposed to the current implementation where you can only lean while stationary I believe. The new system will allow you to lean whilst walking which will be a big improvement overall. That's going to have a massive effect on the gunplay in this game. And there's going to be new per class customization coming soon as well. That's going to allow you to customize your classes distinctly from one another rather than the entire faction just being one look setup as it has been previously. So there really is quite a lot going on with Rising Storm 2 Vietnam right now. A bunch of new content is on the way. The game is currently free to play on Steam for the next few days and the game plus all the DLC is on sale as well so you can go and grab it for cheap before the free to play segment ends. So you've really not got any excuse not to play Rising Storm 2 Vietnam this weekend if it is free to play. Click the link down below in the description and go check out Rising Storm 2 Vietnam on Steam. Download it, give it a go and see what you think. I had a pretty good time playing it and if you're a fan of more hardcore shooter experiences then you're probably going to enjoy this one. But thanks very much for watching today and until next time my name is Westy and I'll catch you guys in the next video.